Police officers exist to serve the public and protect them from danger, as well as bring justice to those who would break the law. Many people look down on all police, which isn't justified, but there are a small minority of cops who should be wearing the handcuffs instead of putting them on anyone else. So join us as we count 10 police officers you won't believe are real. Number 10. Justin Volpe 30-year-old Abner Luima supposedly punched Justin Volpe in the stomach at a nightclub on August 9, 1997 in Brooklyn. Naturally, Volpe arrested the man. However, on their way back to the police station, Volpe beat him with fists, police radios, and nightsticks. Once at the police station, Volpe kicked Luima in the groin and then apparently squeezed his balls. Then, reportedly, another officer held Luima down while Volpe assaulted him with a plunger. He then rammed the plunger into his mouth so hard that it broke his teeth. To put the icing on the cake, Volpe then walked around with the bloody, excrement-covered plunger, saying he took a man down. Luima was taken to hospital. The doctors didn't believe the story Volpe made up about his injuries being from abnormal homosexual sex, so they contacted Internal Affairs. On December 13, 1999, Volpe was sentenced to 30 years in prison without parole, a $525 fine, and an amount of $277,000 to pay for the damage he had done to Luima. Volpe admitted he made a mistake and stated that Luima was not actually the person who punched him. Not exactly a perfect role model. Number 9. Sidney Dorsey Dorsey was a sheriff in DeKalb County, Georgia between 1996 and 2000. While he was sheriff, there were allegations going around about corruption. He lost a runoff election to Derwin Brown in August 2000. Just three days before Brown would take office, he was shot a dozen times outside his house by Patrick Cuffey, an employee of Dorsey's. Dorsey confessed to ordering the hit due to being angry over the results of the election and stress from his failing marriage, as well as a sexual lawsuit. Dorsey was sentenced to 23 years for corruption and a life sentence for Brown's murder. Number 8. Manuel Pardo Manuel Pardo was the perfect policeman. He graduated from his academy class with top grades. He saved a two-year-old's life, among other acts of valor. Unfortunately, he was falsifying traffic tickets, which got him fired in 1979 from Florida Highway Patrol. In 1985, he was fired again from Sweetwater Police Department for lying under oath while testifying on behalf of a fellow officer's drug trafficking trial. Over a three-month period in 1986, Pardo became obsessed with Hitler, and he murdered nine people, six of them because of their association with drugs, the other three victims were women, though he denied killing them. Pardo was executed via a lethal injection on December 11, 2012. Number 7. Stephanie Lazarus Stephanie Lazarus was a Los Angeles Police Department officer. In December 1985, her boyfriend, John Ruiten, broke up with her and married a critical care nurse called Sherry Rasmussen. Three months later, Rasmussen's body was found beaten and shot to death. Police concluded her case to be a robbery gone wrong since her car was missing. The case sat cold for 24 years until Stephanie Lazarus got a promotion to a detective. In 2009, a review of cold cases led Lazarus to become a suspect in the Rasmussen case. Her DNA was matched to a sample taken from a bite found on Rasmussen's body, and it matched. Lazarus is now serving a 27-year sentence in prison. Number 6. Craig Payer Craig Payer was a California Highway Patrol officer who had an ingenious way to get dates with young women. He would direct them onto an unfinished off-ramp and would pull them over. A little inappropriate for sure, but it's not that bad. Until, that is, Payer pulled over 20-year-old Cara Knott, who rejected Payer's advances. Payer beat her with his flashlight and strangled her to death, and then threw her body off a bridge. Ironically, two days later, a reporter interviewed Payer about how to stay safe from predators. Payer had visible scratches on his face, so after the clip aired, many women called in to complain about Payer's inappropriate dating methods. The police investigated the case and found a bunch of evidence incriminating Payer, including the murder weapon in his car. Payer was found guilty and was sentenced to 25 years to life in 1988. He's been denied parole three times since then. Number 5. 
Antoinette Frank. Antoinette Frank worked at the New Orleans Police Department. She developed an unusual relationship with an 18-year-old drug dealer named Roger Lacaz, who had a history of violence. She would introduce him to people as her trainee. On March 4, 1995, the pair robbed a restaurant. Frank shot and killed fellow officer Ronald Williams, whose second son was born only a week before his death. She also murdered two members of the family who owned the restaurant. They both escaped, but Frank later returned to the scene of the crime as a police officer. What she didn't know was that there were witnesses left alive. She was identified as the shooter, both her and Lacaz were convicted of first degree murder and were sentenced to death. One month later, a body was found buried in Frank's yard with a bullet through the skull. It was her father, who had gone missing a year and a half earlier. Number 4 John Burge. John Burge was a high-ranking detective commander in Chicago's South Side from 1972 until his suspension in 1991. There were many allegations of brutality made against Burge and his detectives under him, known as the Midnight Crew. They were suspected to have tortured more than 200 suspects. They would suffocate suspects by covering their heads with bags. They would then give them electric shocks, and apparently the suspects would even be made to play Russian roulette. Since there's a good chance any man would admit to anything under such circumstances, many of those convicted were actually innocent, and thus pardoned in 2000 and 2003. Some were even waiting on death row. The investigation into the Burge and Midnight Crew case began in 2002 and lasted four years, by which point the statute of limitations ran out, so he couldn't be charged for his brutal crimes. Instead, he was imprisoned for four and a half years in federal prison for obstruction of justice and perjury for lying about the torture he had his crew conducted. Not a strong enough punishment, if you ask me. Number 3. William Leisure William Leisure was serving as a traffic cop in Los Angeles for 17 years, but he had a hidden secret. Leisure had millions of dollars stashed in an offshore account, and had a number of expensive sports cars. Apparently, Leisure was running a criminal enterprise by stealing and reselling luxury yachts and cars, and even organized murder hits. He was arrested aboard a stolen yacht in 1986. Five years later, he pleaded guilty to two counts of second-degree murder and is now serving a 15-year sentence. Number 2. Drew Peterson. Drew Peterson was not exactly what you'd call a prize husband. His second wife accused him of abusing her. During his third marriage to Kathleen Savio, 18 calls were made reporting domestic disturbances. They got divorced in 2000 and only one year later Kathleen's corpse was discovered in a bathtub. The police report gave the cause of death to be accidental drowning. His fourth wife, Stacy Ann Kales, was reported missing by her sister on October 29, 2007. Peterson claimed that she had ran away with another man. Her body was never found. Some people reported seeing him dragging a barrel away from his house the day after Stacy went missing. After Stacy's disappearance, Kathleen's body was exhumed and her death was ruled to be a homicide. Drew Peterson was sentenced for up to 60 years in prison, which sounds like a pretty good idea. Number 1 Gerard John Schaefer At the end of our list sits Gerard John Schaefer, a scary man indeed. He was a patrolman who, on July 21st, 1972, picked up a couple of teenage girls who were hitchhiking. He drove them to a remote location in the woods and tied both of them to a tree. Schaefer then got a call, so he had to leave the two girls there. While he was gone, they were able to escape and fled to the nearest police station, which just so happened to be Schaefer's. When Schaefer returned, he noticed the girls were missing and that he had messed up big time. He called his chief and told him some bullshit story about how he wanted to teach them a lesson so the girls wouldn't hitchhike. Fortunately, the chief didn't believe this story, so Schaefer was arrested and charged with assault and false imprisonment. Upon posting bail, Schaefer tortured and murdered 17-year-old Susan Place and 16-year-old Georgia Jessup. Their bodies were only found half a year later. Due to Schaefer's previous run-in with the law, the police got a warrant to search his house, and what they found was truly disturbing. In his home lay clues to over 30 other females, including tokens like jewellery and even teeth from victims. He got two life sentences, but he could never live them out, as he was stabbed to death by his fellow inmate Vincent Rivera on December 3, 1995.